Today, we're doing something a little different. Hey, 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 my name is Viva, and these are my notes and rankings on acne treatments across history. Did you know that in 18th century France, they had pimple patches? I wanna share ancient wisdom that would be a great addition to your skincare routine. This'll be like tier S, tier A, and also some things that I'm really glad we left in the past. This'll be tier F, tier D. In the fourth century AD, an ancient Roman court physician recommended wiping pimples with cloth while watching the falling stars. For more videos about science and skincare, you can check out my socials. And if you'd like to see my videos even earlier, you can do so on Nebula. The details are in the description below. And for now, let's dive in and turn the page. start at the beginning beginning, a society well known for its religion and culture and science and medicine, the ancient Egyptians. They used honey and honey totally works. I have a whole video on a special kind of honey that works especially well, but just know that honey has these amazing like antibacterial, anti-inflammatory properties. And if you want to use it in your skincare routine now, you can use like a honey mask. Just be sure to do like a thin layer of it so it doesn't drip all over the place. On the downside, they did also think that acne was caused by like lying and could be cured with magic. And as much as I want to give magic like an S tier ranking, we live in a very mundane world without it. So that's an F tier. If you think your skincare problems will die with you in the grave, think again, because historians actually suspect that King Tut had a lot of acne because they found 10 gallons of patchouli oil in his tomb. There's lots of patchouli oil products pretty accessible today, but back then that was extremely valuable. Only a pharaoh could have that much. It's known for its antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties, but I'm only gonna give it a B tier because it can cause skin irritation if it's not properly diluted and it might lead to allergic reactions and it's just not effective as a standalone treatment for acne and it also carries the potential for further skin irritation. In ancient China, they believed that acne was caused by imbalances in yin and yang. Some elements of traditional Chinese medicine has been scientifically researched and backed, like the coptis root for acne has been shown to reduce inflammation, but there's not a ton of info about this and it seems to be a very, very, very minor effect, but at least it won't hurt you, so B tier. Moving on to the ancient Greeks. There's a lot of vegetables being used, a lot of honey again being used. Honey is still S tier. They found out it was linked with puberty, which yes, slay, indeed, people do get hormonal acne during puberty. They also called it like the first beard and facial eruption, which these terms seem really harsh, um, especially if you're going through puberty, damn. It was seen as a manifestation of internal problems that were passing through skin pores, namely the idea of the humors, which were blood, phlegm, black bile, and yellow bile, which yeah, kind of hormonal imbalance does cause it, but that's not the only reason. The full list of reasons is actually all this. Meanwhile, in India, Ayurvedic medicine was making face packs, which are essentially just face masks of various herbs. For instance, they would use turmeric, which is really, really good. It's been shown in multiple scientific studies. I have a whole video explaining the details about that, but it is incredible, A tier. Sometimes they would use neem, which can be good, but it can also irritate your skin further. So I'm gonna give that one a B tier. And some masks also had cinnamon, which that one's also just gonna be B tier because it might help reduce acne because it's very anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, but it also has risks like skin irritation, allergic reactions, and it could be a little effective for mild acne, but it's just not likely to be a strong enough treatment for more moderate to severe cases. But you know, they were working with the materials they had at the time. I'm realizing that part of the reason it was so hard to figure out where acne is coming from is because if it comes from so many different places, then you know, it's gonna be really hard to identify which place it's coming from and how to treat it. And with the technology that's available during various times across history, that makes it even harder because we, we have much better technology now and hopefully in the future, it'll get even better. And then as time goes on, things start to get a little weirder. In the first century AD, Roman encyclopedist Cornelius Celsus said that treating pimples was almost a waste of time. And he recommended taking a Roman bath with sulfur and honey and an alum cream situation. Except the bath water of the Romans was communal bath water with irritants and bacteria, both of which are quite bad for skin, F tier. Nowadays, we do have over-the-counter sulfur products where the sulfur acts as a drying agent, but it's usually used in combo with other things and not like as a frontline treatment. So I'm gonna give this one a C tier. Studies don't indicate whether or not alum is effective, but it's still being used. I just wouldn't recommend it. D tier. In the fourth century AD, an ancient Roman court physician recommended wiping pimples with cloth while watching the falling stars. The pimples were supposed to just fall right off. And while that sounds very romantic, your skin's probably just gonna scar if you do this, F tier. In fifth century AD, a Byzantine Greek physician wrote that grape hyacinth burnt with bastard sponge and then smeared on clears away acne. Grape hyacinth for acne isn't scientifically backed, but we do know it causes irritation and potentially even rashes, so F tier. 
Bastard sponge is another way to say coral, and thankfully tech has improved so that we're not using coral for an exfoliant, because that is pretty harsh. I'm gonna give that one a D tier. Throughout the Middle Ages, treatments were based on balancing the humors, diets, herbal remedies, prayers. And with prayers, I almost want to give it an S tier ranking, like Delulu is the Solulu, you know, just pray away your acne. It's kind of ambiguous as to which diets and herbal remedies were used, but as we'll talk more about later, having a balanced diet and herbal remedies that are anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, etc. are ideas that are totally supported by today's science. We did find this study, which shows that they used essential oil of galbanum, which doesn't have a ton of research behind it, so D tier. In the 8th to 13th century, Greco-Arabic physicians were using herbal treatments, which really just depends on the herbs, so I'm gonna give this one kind of an average, like maybe a C ranking. It's now the next day because this video is a little longer than I expected. So then as we move into like the 16th and 19th centuries, we get this weird mix of science that we know today and also ideas that just completely miss the point. The 16th century was the Elizabethan era, so people associated acne with witchcraft, like, ooh, a witch put a hex on you kind of thing. And they also used mercury to cure their acne, which, uh, F tier, that will poison you. We now know that it was probably the lead paint that they were using that promoted acne growth. This isn't really a treatment, but the microscope was also invented, which was really helpful in understanding like what goes on beneath the skin and the term sebaceous gland was also coined. So I'm gonna give that one an S tier. In the 17th century, Japanese people were using nightingale bird poop, which they would dry and crush and then mix with water or rice water to form kind of like a cream and use it for acne and hyperpigmentation. This one, let's break it up into its different segments. As far as the bird poop goes, there's not a lot of scientific evidence and it's not like a generally recommended treatment for acne. So I'm gonna give that one a D tier, I guess. Um, that being said, rice water as a toner, like the water that you use to cook rice is really, really good, but it generally doesn't help with acne specifically, um, though it doesn't hurt it. So at least I'll give that one a C tier. And exfoliation does help with acne, but only like mild exfoliation. Don't, don't be like scrubbing off your skin. So that one I'll give a B tier. In 1648, a guy by the name of Johnson said this. That's a lot of words, but essentially he's trying to explain acne using the medical knowledge of his time, linking it to this combination of bodily fluids and repressed sexual desire. And this is definitely kind of like amusing and bizarre today, but you know, there was a limited understanding of dermatology and psychological factors on physical health back in the 17th century. So whenever there were people who were, you know, getting freaky with it, they would get prescribed laxatives in order to purge the toxins from their body to cure them of their acne. Um, this is definitely an F tier. <laughs> Taking laxatives is not going to cure your acne. As we move into the 18th century, it gets much closer to the science that we know and love today. Did you know that in 18th century France, they had pimple patches? Rich people used expensive silks and velvets, and if you couldn't afford that, it was mouse fur. <laughs> this was super trendy, and some people in court would get really elaborate with it, but this probably wasn't doing anything to the acne besides hiding it, unless the patches were really well cleaned, which they probably weren't. Um, it's sort of like putting just a blanket of bacteria on your skin. Uh, so the concept was almost there, execution and full materials not quite there. So I'm gonna give this one, assuming that the patches were clean, a D tier. In the late 1700s, early 1800s, the fathers of modern dermatology, Robert Willen and Thomas Bateman, literally made a categories list for acne, but they didn't make a tier list, so this is special. They divided acne into a couple different categories, and they indicated that it was coming from stomach or liver problems, which that's part of the cause, but you know, that's not all of it. In 1842, there was the very first description of demodex mites. This is a very gross little fact. This dermatologist took some acne tissue and put it under a microscope and then clearly saw that it moved. This isn't a treatment, but I just want you to know this fact and for me to rank it F tier. <laughs> From there, we're gonna move into the 20th century, the 1900s, where there's definitely a lot more science, but there's also some wild cards. So I think you're gonna love this. In 1902, people were using x-rays to treat acne, which uh, as we now know, that will cause lots of skin cancer and melanoma. And they continued doing this for the next like three to four decades. So I'm gonna give this treatment an F tier. In the early 20th century, people were also using quartz mercury vapor lamps. There's a lot of old studies, but I don't think anyone is using this anymore because of the mercury F tier. People were also using phototherapy and there's not a lot of like conclusive evidence about that, even though some people do use blue light. So I'm gonna give this one a C tier. Man, if I had a nickel for every time people thought that pooping could treat your acne. In 1648 and in 1922 and in 1975, all these people separately thought that bowel movements would be helpful to prevent acne and that reducing your sexual activity would also help, which like neither of these are, none of this is helpful, you know, like this is all F tier. 
Throughout history, there was a focus on avoiding all kinds of food. Like in 1922, they said to avoid candy, pastry, soda water, ice cream, chocolate, etc. Thankfully, the chocolate theory was disproven in 1969, but diet definitely affects hormones, which then affects acne. Like eating a balanced meal more than anything else is what really helps. But the thing is, it's not just diet. You have to have a good like outside and inside. In 1926, this guy named Goodman talked a lot about diets, periods, urine, ingesting various drugs, blood purifiers, sleep potions. A lot of the drugs he recommended had things like bromide, iodine, and the following concoctions and treatments aren't really used because they'd be really drying and irritating. So for example, he had this one concoction, the keratolytic therapy, which is all these different things mixed together. And then he also had the antiseptic therapy, which is this stuff and also not very helpful. F tier on both of these. In 1937, we finally got the description of what happens when the sebaceous gland is blocked. Side note, the paper that this is published in is kind of wild. Like on this one page, they start talking about nocturnal seminal emissions and I just like cannot figure out why. In 1965, we finally had the recognition of benzoyl peroxide as a treatment, which this is very, very good. It's very intense and very drying. So don't use it unless you have like moderate to severe acne. It's also an antiseptic and helps unclog pores. The date I'm not totally sure about because different sources are claiming different dates. It could be as early as 1920, but whatever it is, it's in the 1900s. All right, so after all of this, we finally come to today and our modern acne treatments. If you want a whole like tier list on modern acne treatments, comment below and I'll see what I can do. But for now, here's what we do know. We know that it has a genetic component and that acne is hair follicles that have been clogged with skin oils, bacteria, and dead skin cells. We know that there's different types of acne and they're classified based on what caused them. And over here are some of the most popular treatments today. Some of them are applied to the skin, some of them are ingested, some of them are injected. If you're interested in a full video about this, let me know. But for now, I'm just going to put some quick notes on the screen for you to read. Modern dermatology and cosmetics and skincare is all very complex. There's a lot of science that goes into it, but the better you're able to understand the science, the more you can understand how to make it work for you. I learned a lot of this stuff over at my friend Lab Muffin Beauty Science. She makes such amazing videos about like sunscreen science and the different types of like chemical treatments you can get for your hair. If you're interested in any of her videos, you can watch it over at Nebula. Nebula's got hundreds of top educational creators, whether you're interested in beauty science or you're interested in cosmetic chemistry and skincare science, or you wanna watch a therapist break down the psyche of a fictional character. <laughs> Nebula is a platform built and run by creators, and they're totally ad-free. Plus, there's Nebula Originals, where creators make awesome content funded by Nebula, and it's available exclusively there too. And if you sign up using my link, you'll get a special price of 40% off a yearly membership, which will not only support me, but it'll also support hundreds of other creators too, which I think is pretty cool. And for now, that's all I have on acne treatments across time. It's really interesting to see how far science has come and how far we still have yet to go. Hundreds and hundreds of hours went into researching this video from reading old papers to deciphering what the words back then meant in context of words now to figuring out all the different treatments from all these different cultures. And so for all of this, I would like to thank Jocelyn Liu for ideating this video and helping me with research and writing it. If you have any ideas on what videos I should do next, leave a comment below and I'll see you on the next page. Homeostasis. Hi, Lulu.